Hello, everybody. And I hope you're doing well this Sunday. Um, so we did two weeks ago, I showed you how to do Skinner blends and canes and other kinds of stuff. And then uh, last week we did some more canes. And then today we are going to do actual flowers. And I kind of showed you last time how to do the petals and all that. But let's see how we do uh, actually build the flower itself and what can we use it for. And if you have any issues uh, hearing me, please let me know. Hi, Darlene. Hi, Ellen. Uh, so don't forget to let me know if you have any issues hearing or anything. Um, what I wanted to tell you is that I finally found, as, as I said, I'm completely reorganizing the house and I managed to find, I knew I had some geodes. Hi, Tina. Hi, John. Hi, Chris. Okay. V from Spicy, what's the name? I don't know. Good morning. Hi, Caroline. Uh, but because I do fully intend, I got a lot of messages about doing geodes and agate slices. And yes, I will be doing them. This is one of them I got uh, close to the, I put on the table, but uh, I just couldn't find where I had put them and I finally found them. So we'll do some of these. Hey, Soyle, your internet is good enough for live. Hi, Elaine. Hi, Claude. Bonjour. Hi, Frandel. So, initially, I had that. I thought I had a... I guess I didn't. Just a second. I need some thread, just plain thread. I think I'm gonna grab the macrame because it's a little bit thicker. Um, this we are going to use for the stamens. Is it's a very easy way to do stamens. Hi, Christina. <laughs> so nobody has any kind of uh, hearing issues, do you? And I said that on this one, I will show you how to paint stuff. Now, you probably have seen in other artists' um, uh, videos how they paint the lilies after they put them together. I personally prefer to paint them before I put them together. Actually, I forgot which of them it was, if it was this one or this one. Anyway, we can do both. Uh, and another thing that I have to, hi Daris, I have to apologize if at any point there's something I don't do correctly. Um, for people who follow me on Facebook, they know people who don't, uh, I'll just have to let you know that uh, finally the mystery of my eyesight being so bad <laughs> has been solved. I do have cataracts in the right eye. On April 19th, I have an appointment with the surgeon and I am glad that it's something that's so simple that can be fixed because I have a whole bunch of uh, eye issues and I was really worried about the future of my eyesight. So if at any point uh, there's something that I have to redo or if I mess up or if I don't hold it properly, uh, you'll know why. Okay. Hi, Christy. So, essentially, remember how I showed you last time how the petals of a lily are? You'll have two layers, pretty much. Each layer has three petals, and they would be one underneath and one on top. And the petals are, are pretty much the same size, and they form that lily cup. Hi, Marietta. So what is the best way to actually create 
a uh, a lily flower and i'm going to do it with this one because this one doesn't really need painting and then i'll grab the paints to do the the rest and uh, remember that i normally put paper between the petals to make sure that they don't uh, get messed up uh, the thing is that with the flowers, the the main problem you will get, uh, you will encounter when you bake them, is uh, that if you want to make the flower to look nice and pretty, you cannot make the petals very thick. Now, if the petals are thinner, then it becomes an issue when you try to bake them because no matter how well you arrange them uh, they might be drooping while you're baking so i'm going to show you also how to make little cradles for your flowers which can become a little bit uh, delicate uh, to make especially when you make smaller flowers but I'll make uh, them first in a larger size so you can see what I'm talking about. And that's why I'm going to choose this one first because the petals are a little bit uh, larger than the than this one. So let's create. As I said, first of all, how do we do the uh, stamens? Okay, this is not yellow, it's English lace, but it should do just fine. So, first of all, you are going to need some thread. And I'm using macrame right now because it's much easier to see on the camera. I wouldn't have to get with the camera all the way in. And I have a very poor pair of scissors. I chose the wire cutting ones, not the good ones. There we go. So what you want to do is first to get your thread and you prepare this before starting the flower because you want it to be nice and uh, dry by the time you're doing. And you can do this kind of uh, uh, stamens for any kind of flower that has stamens upright like that so what i'm going to do you see how i practically wrapped it and i could do it one more time but i'm going to just do it like this so first cut them in a single line and somebody asked me before, why don't I get, uh, they gave me links for good scissors and stuff. Well, I use my scissors for all kinds of crafts. And uh, a lot of times, because sometimes it's painful for me to move, I would use the same scissors for cutting paper and cutting jewelry wire and cutting all that. So this is why I normally get uh, sets of scissors from the dollar store that I don't mind that I get messed up. Okay, so once we do that, what we need is a piece of wax paper or parchment paper. This is not very nice. Let me try and get another piece that's not so Yeah, you can use a tile if you want to. You don't have to use a paper necessarily. So what we do is just get a piece of paper or something, aluminum foil, whatever you want. And I'm going to place this here. And then I'm going to put, hi, Lord Daniel. Hi, Marietta. Thank you, Christina. Hi, Anna. And then I'm going to grab some of this acrylic. Use 
easel. And you don't really need a paintbrush for this. You can use a simple I should have probably gotten a better color to see better. It's like pink beige on beige, but oh well. And then and this way you do more than one at once. If you remember, I did this kind of stuff for the um, uh, Remembrance Puppy. I showed you this, but it was with uh, light colored on, uh, on black thread. You didn't miss a lot, I just started. Okay, so let's put this aside to dry. And then we'll take care of the petals in the meantime. And remember, I prefer these. I actually need to get another set because Trish has them now uh, in a set. You get both the long one and the short one, and they're like six bucks or something like that. Uh, poly clay play. And I need to get me another set. And uh, I showed before, but I remember that I always show all these things because there might be somebody who's new and didn't see that before. Whenever you have a cane that is uh, diamond shaped or ovoid, you don't want to cut like this because if you cut like this, then you're going to uh, squish it with every cut. Um, so the way that you want to cut it is first place it like this. This would be your table. Place it like this and cut like this, one slice. Then for the second slice, tilt it over and cut like this. And just keep alternating because that way, if you do that, your cane will not get uh, squished and deformed. So let's cut six slices and I'm going to try to cut them about one millimeter and usually the first slice is the messed up one yeah it's not very well cut It takes me a little bit until I get the proper angle. And also I cannot cut from above with the camera being above. I'm going to have to try and find a good angle for the camera for this kind of stuff that the camera wouldn't be right above my piece because you want to cut the full petal see like I cut this one is not a good cut it misses this part and this part is too thin hi Cecile okay and one more okay now, I know last time I think I used this, and I decided that this is good only for larger um, uh, petals of any kind. So, if you purchase this, I would recommend that you use, if you purchase this set, I would recommend that you use either this one or the iris one and they work much better even for smaller um, petals because see how the veins are much better hi gail selena edet <coughs> excuse me <coughs> i had to turn the heat back on because we are experiencing another uh, wave of 
freezing of winter. And I forgot to turn on the humidifier, so my my throat is a little bit dry. And uh, as I said last time, that these veiners are a little bit large for making smaller stuff out of polymer clay. And I will uh, refocus the camera here in a little bit, so you can see it up close and personal. This is a veiner that's normally for sugar craft. So it's quite large. When I purchased it, um, they didn't say the dimensions properly. And initially I was kind of miffed. But then after I started using it, I saw that it can actually be used for smaller stuff. And what I like is the fact that uh, you put stuff in between and then the petals come up just beautifully veined, even if the veining is a tad larger than what I would like. It should be in the molds, but if it's not, I'm going to check after this. Hi, Donna. <laughs> Thank you for the happy cold Sunday. And you see that the type of uh, silicone that they used to make these is really neat because your clay does not get uh, stuck to it. So they are really, really awesome. I'll use the rose one for the next kind. Of Lily. Oh no, I needed one more. This one is not well cut. Duh. Okay. Hi, Rosanna. Thank you. And the last one. And now what you want to do is to create a little base these are not really dry, but they are almost dry. Separating them so they dry faster. Well, let's make this first flower without the painted stamens, and I'll paint them afterwards. So I'm going to grab a few threads here and you want first to make a base for your uh, petals and in that base you want to incorporate your stamens and it's okay to make them longer you can cut them afterwards okay I did the mess here And I'm going to use the petals that I cut wrong to make this. So make a kind of a little flat piece here. And then just grab in the flat piece. Okay, this doesn't. I keep messing. <laughs> uh, grab one of the ends in the flat piece, fold it, and now you have your stamens secure. And it's less than what I should put 
here, but just to show you the how you should do it. And it's okay for not being super realistic. Remember that my Sunday lives are not for necessarily master class, but more for people who are now starting. And uh, I want to show something that uh, can be achieved beautifully without uh, needing super expertise. So what we need is to make a little base for our flower. And I'm taking a paper towel. And then I'm going to take a bowl stylus. And I'm creating like a little power for the flower. See, pretty much like this. And that way I can even transport it and put it in the oven properly. But you want to, we want it to be not super deep because then your lily would be not fully opened. And then, now, if you want to attach the flower to something, you might want to work it on a um, toothpick. But if you don't, and if you're going to just set it on clay, you can work on it as is. A lot of times, many flower maker, polymer clay artists, flower makers uh, prefer to work it on a toothpick because it's much easier to manipulate. So just, you can just place it on a toothpick. Uh, most of the time the flower will be more on the top, but you can safely trim the bottom. And let's place the first row of petals. Now see here, I don't like, the tip of the petal is not thin enough. Oh yeah, and I said I was going to refocus the camera. Give me just a second. No, I didn't this. I didn't do this thin enough. Now it's much better. And let me refocus the camera for a second so you can see better what's going on here. trying to show you the veining. See, the veining is very, very realistic. Okay. So now, now let's start placing the petals. And remember, we need first to place three Yeah, that was the idea.
I placed one a little bit too high, but it will be fine. So we have the first layer of petals and then the next layer of petals will be in between these ones. Sorry, as I said, it's in my really bad seeing spot. <laughs> oh, come on. Okay, this one was not very well done, but you got the idea. And then once you get it done, and then you can start arranging the petals a little bit. You can use a bowl stylus. To get them a little bit more bowing. At the bottom. I put some too high and some too low, but I'm going to be fine for the next one. Got the idea of what you're supposed to do. That's the whole point. Remember I said in my about, there will be days when I can show you how it's done, but not able to do it myself very well. But pretty much this is how you do the whole uh, lily. And yes, this was supposed to be the stargazer. Okay. Hi, Cherry. I'm trying to see the chat. Okay, now let's go to, and as I said, you put it in the little bower, you can we get to the point because you can still see the the middle here so i'm going to gently start pressing them in very 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 gently got a petal that i placed way too high and then you can bring them down and at this point you can go ahead and if you have too much here you can go ahead and cut the extra and then you can place it in the little bower and work a little bit more on the petal. And you have your first lily. Let's go ahead and do another one, just so we can see one more time how it's done. And then we'll move to the painted ones. And yeah, the idea is why I wanted to show you the lilies, I'm gonna tell you, and I hope that my help will allow me to do that. Um, among those Artsico uh, molds that I showed you in the tutorial before the last one I posted, I uploaded, uh, the one with the dogs and dog and cats, uh, among the Artsico uh, molds, there's a mold uh, that has uh, crosses. So my idea was before Easter goes around to do a tutorial or two with uh, crosses with Easter lilies. Because I thought to kind of pander for the Christian holiday in April and then May for the 
uh, pagan people, new age people, it's built in. So I'll do something that's kind of like celtic -y, something like that. Okay, so I made another bower. And this time we should go much faster, but this time I'm going to use the rose uh, mode. If I can ever open it properly. <coughs> but yeah, we had thunderstorms Friday and we had temperatures in the 70s and then we had a big uh, Arctic front from the Rockies and we had 29 degrees this morning. So yeah, that was not very nice. At least I think this is for roses. I don't know for what else. Might be for other stuff. But it looks like they would be really good for roses. Okay, let me try and get six more petals. And that's the, the danger when you make flowers of getting the petals of different thicknesses is that you'll get, once you put them through the veiner, is that you'll get uh, petals of different sizes because they'll flatten and get enlarged and I cut wrong. This is not very well cut. And there we go, I kind of flattened it. Anyway, so let's go ahead and try this one. See how this one works. I'm not going to put it all the way in there. Now, because I don't want it to be too messed up. Yeah, these things go really good. Hi, Sonia. I don't know if I said hi, Edith. If I didn't, then I say hi. If I did, sorry. And once again, I'm going to tell you, E for flowers, your best bet is not actually uh, Primo, which works if you're that's the only thing you can get your hands on but it's much better to work with cernit or pardo when you make flowers and yes once i finish rearranging my craft room i will be starting working with pardo again because pretty much that's why i got the second uh, motor pasta machine so I can have one for, for Pardo and one for Primo. And I have taped, I started doing a review about the pasta machine to make the comparison between the Makins and the Atlas. I should be able to post it soon. But you know that generally the end of the month is uh, really busy for me. Hi, Ellen because that's when I uh, bring out the sponsor tutorials. And of course I broke it. And by the way, this can be fixed if you do what I just did. Just put one of the parts a little bit under the other and then just place it back in the... I wasn't paying attention when I lifted it. And there we go. We have six now. No, no, I should have this. But uh, hold on a second. I remembered. <coughs>
somebody messaged me yesterday and asked me if I can show the baby turtles from the sponsor tutorial. And yeah, here it is. It's the pendant. The sea turtle. Baby sea turtle pendant. And I made, when I made the tutorial, I actually showed how everything is done in a larger size. But off camera, I made the regular. So I promised I was going to show it in the live today. Okay. Now we can take these ones now and use them because they are fairly dry. But I'm not going to take all of them. And if I would have used yellow, but the headphones cable doesn't extend that far. Hi, Joan. And we are going to do the exact same thing. First, I'm going to bend these, because this way it will be all the colored tip. Standing up. And then take a, one of the petals that I cut wrong. Again, make the flattened strip. And then get the stamens caught in it. And you want to make sure that you got them really good. And then create this. And around it. Is this well focused? Hold on a sec. Let me make sure that I'm well focused. Okay, this should be good. Okay, now let's do the second, which is done with the other. Actually, I didn't vein this one right. I didn't put it in the middle. And the veins run, run kind of diagonally. a little bit better. Okay, so once again, we want to start about here with the first layer. So it would be divide your little thing into three and the first layer of petal, put it with the bottom at the two thirds. So let's place the first one. The second one and kind of curve it a little bit before you place it. Not that curve. And I broke it. Oh. So this one makes the veins a little bit too thick. I guess the iris one is still better. There you go. This one comes up much nicer. I did not get in a hurry to show you. And then the second, you can place just a tad lower. Just a tad, not by much. But right in between the other three.
Hi, Tia Lisa. I'm sorry, Carolyn, but you can watch the replay, I guess. And you want to make sure that they are well together about where your little base would end. You want to bring them together up to there. And then you can go ahead and curve down the petals. And and this one needs to be a little bit more. Because, of course, the, there are lilies who are more open and lilies who are less open. Okay, this one needs to be larger. The flower is larger, so this base needs to be larger. Awesome. Did you try the method I showed in the live or another method? Method. Okay, this should. Oops, no, it still falls. Let me get it the other way. Goodness gracious. I normally cut my paper towels to size and uh, to be honest, what I do to make them keep the, this shape, whenever I try to make, I want to make flowers, uh, I would moisten them when I shape them and let, then let them dry, and then they dry in that shape. Hi, Marilyn. But it will still hold the flower very nicely. Okay, now let's move ahead and do the painted one. Let me grab my... Paintbrush and the acrylic. Okay, for this you generally want um, an alizarin crimson or a burnt umber. And I got here the burnt umber. And you want a very, very fine paintbrush. There we go. I'm going to confess to you that I usually trim a paintbrush to get it. You need a round one and then I very gently go with the uh, exacto knife and I pretty much layer it to get this. Thank you, Cherry. Okay, now let's cut six petals of this one and then I'm going to first vein them and then I'm going to paint them. But I'm going to paint them before putting the flower together. Okay, 
Now be careful to vein them all in the same direction. Because see how the this is more towards one end than towards the other end. Oh, there you go. I couldn't find the other part. And if your uh, fingers have issues like mine, I'll show you the secret on how to do this without a lot of effort. Uh, first, place your two things together properly. And then you can simply get your roller and press and you'll get your veining without having to push too hard with your fingers. So let me do that again. So you place this, see how it's got these little spaces in between. And then this way you can just roll back and forth. And I'm going to do this with uh, all of them because I want to elongate them a little bit while veining. That's another tip. If you're using this and you want your petals a little bit longer than what you did, you can use your roller to elongate them. Because they'll get longer at the same time they are getting veined. Yes, I do. Thank you so much, Cherry. Thank you for reminding me. Goodness. Thank you so much. I forgot to mention it at the beginning and I will almost, I'm like 20 minutes overdue. Oh, thank you. I was wondering why my hands were hurting. I was like, is the weather getting bad already? Again. <coughs> yeah, it's uh, not like I have the same time every day to take it. It all depends on uh, when I wake up. Oh, yes, I'm actually planning on uh, making some sugar flowers with them, too. Uh, because I have to take my pill pretty much every four hours to keep the pain under control. Because when I forget to take it and it starts hurting, it's much harder to get it back under control than it is when I keep taking my pain pills regularly every four hours. So depending when I wake up, because sometimes I wake up at 4, sometimes 4.30, sometimes 5.30. And uh, this morning I woke up at 5. So it was 1 o'clock I was supposed to. I took the second pill at 9. Yeah, I did that the day when I went to the doctor, Wednesday. They told me they put some drops in my eyes. I mean, not just for the dilation, but also they told me that for a few days it's going to make that cataract thing a little bit better. I didn't elongate it enough. Uh, but the dilation, they had to dilate dilate my pupils a little bit more than normal and they told me it would last kind of like between six to eight hours well it lasted almost ten so because uh, i wasn't able to do much of anything a lot of stuff lynette it's uh, basically it's a combination of side effects from cancer treatment 
I have several of them, but it is, yes, one of them is osteoarthritis. I had to take, uh, you know, breast cancer is of all kinds, it's not one kind, there are several types, and uh, essentially that's breast cancer that feeds on hormones and breast cancer that doesn't feed on hormones. And I had pretty much five different types of breast cancer in one single tumor, of which two were non-invasive and three were invasive. But all of them, the pathology showed that all of them were feeding on estrogen. And because of that, I had to take what's called the Ramataz inhibitors. Uh, the estrogen in your body, it doesn't matter if you're male or female, uh, is fixed by a, an aromatase, and it's a type of enzyme. And the uh, aromatase inhibitors, what they do, they practically inhibit those enzymes. So those not existing, then your estrogen cannot get, you know, metabolized. And I had to take that for almost five years. I didn't go to five years. It was a little bit over four years because uh, what it does to you, it's kind of like a menopause on fast forward. Because you know the, that all the side effects from menopause, the loss of bone mass and everything else, it's practically because of the loss of estrogen because estrogen has a huge uh, what am I call it um, effect on our bodies like all hormones do and with me those aromatase inhibitors practically triggered a very rapidly advancing osteoarthritis uh it's osteoarthritis it's not rheumatoid arthritis I have no inflammation whenever I do the blood work, the C-reactive protein comes back trace. Hi, Noemi. So it's simple osteoarthritis. And uh, the most affected is the base of the thumb. So I have spurs here. And especially here, I have a spur that broke off and it's kind of moving around over there. So that's what makes my pinching and grasping uh, painful i'm supposed at one point to go and get uh, surgery on that they go in there it's a very very small cut and they go in there and they kind of shave off the the spurs but the worst part is that it's uh it's messed up my cervical spine and you know when you have your lumbar spine the lower back it affects your lower limbs but being the the neck spine it practically affects really bad my arms and hands because all the nerves, I have a lot of uh, bone spurs and uh, it's so bad that my spine marrow is constricted and even deformed in a couple places. Uh, so that's the main, those are the main issues with the pain and with the use of my hands that's affected. Okay, let me now try and zoom in, focus and zoom in. And have a good focus on this. I usually put my fingernail to figure out the best focus. Okay. Hi, Lynette. Oh, I said already, Lynette. I didn't... There's nobody I missed, right? To say hello. But yeah, I was one of those unfortunate people when they say you might get this side effect. If any medication <laughs> involved in breast cancer treatment said you might get this side effect, I was sure to get it, unfortunately. Okay, so we are going to consider this area as the bottom of the petal. And that's where we want to insist on doing the, and I'm going to turn them inside because this being the base, I want the one that's 
kind of like concave to be the inside of the petal where we are going to place the little dotties. And it's very simple. If you don't have a lot of uh, hand steadiness, one thing that you can use with a lot of success is a simple marker, um, a fine tip marker. But all you do is get enough <laughs> acrylic first on your paintbrush and then just start dotting. But as I said, if you have problems with uh, holding the paintbrush steady, a very fine tipped marker will uh, do will make wonders oh will do wonders but and uh, they are not super expensive but the fine tip markers for a work on polymer clay are something that uh, it's a good idea to invest in the same as i say that one of the things that you cannot allow yourself to make economies on is the a var good varnish paintbrush because that makes a world of difference if you have a good varnish paintbrush and i saw all kinds of things uh, recommended by others well what i can tell you from my experience of decades of art painting if you want a good if you want to do a good job when varnishing, do not use a flat paintbrush. With a flat paintbrush, you are more prone to uh, leave streaks and bubbles. Also because you have to keep lifting it to get more. The ideal paintbrush for varnish is uh, a watercolor paintbrush, one that is round. And let me show you the shape of it. It has to be shaped like this. See, this is the, the ideal. It has to be, don't get stingy and get a real uh, hair one. A squirrel is about the best. And I know really good paint brushes are fairly expensive. I mean, they can be even over $100. Uh, I did find a pretty good one on Amazon. That's only like $15. If you look in the paints area in my influencer store, you'll see it. But why do you need one like that? Uh, to start with, with the watercolor paintbrush, the watercolor paintbrushes are made to hold a lot of liquid and not to release a lot of it at the same time. So when you use the round uh, watercolor paintbrush, you'll have a whole bunch of varnish in the paintbrush itself, but it will not release a whole lot at the same time. And that way, uh, you will not be streaking. <clears throat> and not only that, but you won't have to keep lifting the paintbrush from what you're doing to have to dip it to get more varnish, you know? So that is very, very important. Also, because it's fluffy and very dense, uh, the risk of trapping air is very limited. So even, and I'm talking about any kind of varnish, be it Veratane, be it uh, the deep shine that Tiny Pandora uh, sells, be it um, Minwax, be it Golden, your best bet is still with that. And most of them can be cleaned with um, 
soapy water. It, it depends on what the varnish is based on. In the case of uh, like the water-based varathane and min wax and stuff, then your best bet is soapy water. Just let the paintbrush sit in a, a glass with soapy water for at least an hour. Don't leave it longer than that because the paintbrush gets like this on the bottom of the uh, glass and it's going to deform. You don't want to have it deforming. Uh, but if you have another type of uh, like the, the scalpy glaze, with the scalpy glaze, your best bet is alcohol. And the same goes for the shellac. And uh, for UV resin as well, you can clean it with alcohol. And uh, the same is for the liquid clay. Alcohol will clean it. So, as I said, you want to invest in a good paintbrush for that kind of work. The same as you want to get a really good lid tiny, small paintbrush for this. This is a, also a watercolor paintbrush that I'm using. But as I said, I kind of trimmed it to make it even thinner. And I'm going to paint these ones too. And then we'll put them together. Okay, I messed up. It's okay, it's going to be the middle. And once I finish painting, I'll be able to catch up with the chat because I have to take to remove my glasses to see what I'm doing here. Okay, now let's do the... Veining really quick. And see, they are very flexible and it's easy to remove the petal after you veined it. Just remember which side of the petal you're going to use on the bottom because you see it kind of curves it. And that's really good for the lilies. If you already have a little bit of a concavity to start with. And let's move to the tiger lily. And the same thing. I'm going to do little dots. But this time, they are going to be all pretty much all over the, the petal. So 
Now see how long I can go without dipping the paintbrush again because it's a watercolor paintbrush. So it will hold a lot of liquid in one go. Can you do this with a cane? Definitely. But in order to get nice, perfectly rounded dots in a cane, you need a little bit of experience. Most of the time when you're just starting, you're not going to get dots, you're going to get lines. So it's much easier to just do this. And as I said, if you're not very handy with a paintbrush, simply use a marker. Here we go. Now I can put back my glasses and catch up with the chat and refocus the camera. Hi, Lana. Yeah, I'm okay. Hi, Eliel. Thank you. What is with the... See, is that still our time? Oh, yeah. I'm going to check, as I said, I'm going to check. Uh, I think that I put them in the influencer store. Let me check, actually. Let me give you just a short check while my eyes are adjusting. And the paint is... No. no, no, I did not put them. Give me just a minute. Okay, I, I figured out what this one is. It's a penny. That's what it is. Let me find this one, because I know that these are quite expensive, but... I'm going to put there several.
And so I know these weren't that expensive. Most of them online, they're like, God, 30, 40, 50 bucks. But you can use just one kind of uh, petal veiner for a lot of other petals. You don't need to get them, especially because we make them so much smaller than the flowers that go on a cake. And there are a lot of cheaper ones. Just be aware that uh, they come all the way from uh, China. So instead of getting them on Amazon, I would just go on AliExpress. If it's not on Amazon Prime. Honestly. I'm trying to find this exact one that I got. There are full kits that have the mold, the cutter, and all kinds of other stuff. Let me actually put one of them there. And they are called gum paste molds. They are not sugar craft, they are gum paste actually. But if you go, I put already quite a good number of them in the mold section of my Amazon influencers, influencers. So which of them? Which of my kitties? Thank you, Elaine. Both kitties are right now sleeping. Yes, I get a few cents. Yes. And I get a few cents from every purchase you make through my links, through my store. And it helps a lot with buying the stuff that I need to make the tutorials. Okay, I think we are good. For now so let's go ahead and get again a few stamens and make the tiger lily first and one more time I'm going to so see how the the paint on the tip of the thread now as I said I didn't <laughs> reach to grab the yellow. The best is to use yellow, not English lace pink. It will show much better on the thread. And we are going to I'm going to get one of these too. Because I don't have enough of the yellow of the orange. And as before I'm going to Grab the stamens. Just remember, this is also the base on which you attach your petals. And let's get on with the end again. The two thirds rule. And yes, you can make all other kinds of flowers like this. Anything that starts with the bell shape, pretty much. And then the other three go in between the first three. 
and just a pinch lower. And your first thing to do is to first grab these and get them nicely rounded together and then you can come back and shape the lily. Now let's do the other one. The larger one is going to be much easier. And again, I'm folding these. Grabbing a piece of clay, now this one being a little bit larger, I'm going to need a little bit more. Because the base will be much larger. And you form kind of like a ribbon. And fold it around. And shape your... Oops. Ovoid thing. Make sure that the threads are well incorporated in the clay here. And then the same as with the other ones. Uh, always check, even when you don't have the, the dots and you don't know, always check whichever part is, whichever side is a little bit concave. That's the one that you're placing inside and then the second row in between the first ones and just a tad lower And we need to get them really good together. And then we can get back and start shaping the petals. First the outside ones. And then the inside ones as well. And it's a remember that it's a good thing to curve them a little bit because that's going to give them more stability. And obviously, I need to come a little bit higher with them. As you come higher, don't push them too tight together, just enough to hold on each other. Mm 
Okay. And then all you have to do is to bake them in those uh, little bowers made out of paper. No, I'm sorry. Thank you. So this is pretty much it. You see, it's not that hard to make them. As long as you go by those principles I showed you, you can make yourself a whole little garden of them. And they are especially beautiful if you make uh, fairy doors or fairy gardens or, as I said, uh, crosses. You can make nice centerpieces for the Easter table. Hi, Najwa. So I guess this is it. And um, hopefully I'll get in time and my health will allow me to do that uh, uh, crucifix with uh, lilies on it. And that I, as I said, in for May, I'm going to do something Celtic. And these look more like a hellebore than a lily, honestly. Uh, from far like this. I mean, as they are, because they are, half of them is in the paper. But we'll make other flowers. As I said, I'm going to start working with the pardo again. And that's going to be a lot of fun. Anyway. Okay, I'm going to work more because I'm going to bring in for my sponsors a few more videos. And for YouTube, you know, that's going to come. Uh, there are two more projects with the leopard skin. One is uh, with the blue one and the other one I've been showing it to you is the, the third effect that I showed on the tutorial is with this one. I'm not there yet because I have first the sponsors tutorials to come up with. And uh, then there's this that's going to be, I'm almost wrapped up with the tutorial on this one. That's really pretty, isn't it? So nice and white and pretty. And then the, the public. sea turtles this is almost wrapped up too but i'm working on stuff don't think i'm not it's just that i have to take breaks and it, now with me not seeing very good it's going a little bit no actually it looks like a tuberose more than anything i love tuberoses anyway so i'll see you next sunday and we'll do something fun next Sunday. And thank you for being here with me. And I hope you'll have fun making your lilies. And look forward to the Easter centerpiece that we're going to make. And then I'll have two more surprises for you. Hopefully, uh, we'll be able to do them both in, the in April. So, talk to you later. And have a wonderful what's left of Sunday. Goodbye. And happy claying.